Mark, are you ready? I'm ready to talk Stonehenge and building cool stuff and just hanging out with cool people. Well, I have to say that today is National Multiple Personality Day. Huh. Is that right? It is. And I think that is an actually a really good thing because they say that for multiple personalities, you either, one, want to get in touch with your own self, your own personality, so your personality is meeting your personality, or you want to appreciate that some people actually have multiple personalities. And I'm fascinated with national days. And Stonehenge, we're talking about that today, how we would build that today. You know what Stonehenge's biggest day of the year is? The solstice is, is would be my answer to that. The summer solstice. It's, so the, it's like it's the summer solstice. Solstice. Sol solstice. Yes, and it, like tens of thousands of people go there for sunrise, which is like at I don't know five o'clock in the morning or some really early time. All these people converge upon it, and I think it's awesome. I talked to Paul DeMeo and Carly Eisenberg about like what tools they would use. Yeah, like how would they recreate that today? If they were trying to do it sort of old school and new school, excavators, whatever you want to talk about. But before we get started, I want to give some props out to our sponsors because we couldn't do this. Talk yes. about random things like Stonehenge without them. So yes. I want to give a props to Hyde. Thank you guys for all that you do. And if you don't have a multi-tool in your kitchen drawer. You're not a DIYer. You're something else. Get it in your tool pouch. We've got videos about it on our website. You can check it out. And Sherline. Sureline. Sureline helps make the My Fix It Up Life podcast and radio show possible. Yeah, so if you're at the store looking around for something to paint with, check them out. Sureline.com, hidetools.com. Yes. And let's get started. Let's, let's talk about Stonehenge today. Let's build it, brick it, stone it, make it happen. Hot damn. So, Mark. I was thinking that you could build me something really awesome for Mother's Day this year. I think you have to get started right now. I'm going to jot it down. What do you have in mind? Well, you know, wedding rings are lovely, but other rings are also kind of cool, oh, like God. Stonehenge. Oh, sure. Yeah. You think you could build that for me? Fair enough. Um, all I need are, uh, let's see, I need a... Um, uh, Paul DeMeo. Yes, from standing by. Building Wild. I think he might be actually able to like actually make that happen. Yeah, too. National Geographic Channel, which obviously makes you completely qualified to recreate Stonehenge in our backyard. Apparently, I had no idea that that's all I needed to do to recreate Stonehenge in the backyard there. Yeah, that that's really it. is. That's, that's all it. the qualifications you need. Like, you're used to working with lots of people, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. And, yes. you know, organizing people together to build something in the wilderness. I think that you have all of those skills. I, I think so. Well, like, at least we have the people. We have the people. Whether or not we have the skills, it's yet to be seen, you know, okay. I'm sent over, sent over some information about it because I really don't know a whole lot about it. I've never seen, I've never been there, Okay. And, but it's always interested me and I always figured, I, I kind of know how I would do it. Okay. So how would you do it? And sort of, I want to focus in on that ring of stones that they have and I listed them out, so it's on our website, too, if anybody wants to play along. But the first step is to dig the ditch that's about 320 feet in diameter. And it's 20 feet wide and about 5 feet deep. So how would we build that trench if we were doing it, like, tomorrow? Well, tomorrow we would use, we would use heavy equipment. I mean, it would be no problem to go in there with heavy equipment and excavators and dozers and do just that. I mean look around at what we can, the way we can move earth and, and take down mountains and put mountains up. So that, uh, I think that that's how we would do that today. Now we're in the United States of America, because you have probably built in almost every state in the union, which state would have the soil that is most likely to cooperate well, with this project? Yeah, Paul, let me add something to your credibility from being on the National Geographic channel. Also, you're a geologist. So just feel yeah. free to make up any, any answer that you want. He's a soil okay. scientist. What I would do is I would do, it, I would do it near a river. 
if I was near a river, that means the soil on that river is has already been like all the, a lot of stuff has been washed away. So in other words, let's pick an area in Vermont along along the Batten Kill. 24 feet of topsoil, 24 feet of topsoil. That's a lot of topsoil. So you can dig down, dig down, and you're not going to really hit any bedrock until you get <clears throat> below below that, that riverbed. You know, we could certainly do it out in the sands of, of, of Nevada and in the desert because it's sandy, but it may close in on you a little bit. So I would think in a valley where sediment has all gathered and it's deep enough that if I didn't have an excavator, I could go ahead and take some logs that I've carved out and kind of made my own shovel. And with two or 3,000 Extreme Makeover Home Edition volunteers, we could dig that ditch. Does that sound good, right? That sounds really good. And you know what? They actually built Stonehenge near a river, too. I think that they sort of had that I want to say going for them. Avon. That sounds right. Oh, and I'm wearing the blue shirt. I'm wearing the extreme makeover color too, so I can volunteer to help. I'm also an Avon lady. No, and the blue stone that's used to make that circle, correct? Yes, it's blue stone and sarsen stone. I have no idea what sarsen stone is. Sarsen is the, it, I shouldn't say rock hard, but super granite kind of wicked hard rock that they right. made the. The these the posts. I'm moving my hands up and down to show vertical. I think that's how you dance as well. It is. Right. Yeah. Those are like the 30, 35 ton puppies that they dragged out of whales. Right, right. And I have a whole idea on how they went ahead and got those, you know, how how they went ahead and, and stood them up, you know. Interesting is how do you get this one on top? You know, Paul simulating uh, the Stonehenge construction with a DVD, I think, of Chef and, and his, book. His, his own oh, his own DVD because Paul's a musician and uh, uh, or CD and all kinds yeah. of stuff. I love it when you pull stuff off your desk to recreate a Neolithic kind of structure. And that's I, I do that's how you do it. Right. That, that movie Chef was really good, too. Have you oh, seen it? Phenomenal. Yeah. Favreau's crazy. Phenomenal it, movie. Yeah, for anybody who doesn't believe in the power of Twitter, you have to watch Chef, and then you will be a convert. You totally will. It's a true story. It is. <laughs> yes, yes. Chef is a documentary about Twitter. Totally, yes, yeah. Okay, so, you know, we've, we've dug out our trench, and what they use, I think they say, is antlers to actually dig it out when they were doing that work, and it's kind of unbelievable. So we're building this in Vermont now, which is great, because that's where you went to college, Mark. Yes. So you're familiar. With the whole area. Yeah. Build it in Vermont. So when they put those stones on top of each other, they did mortise and tenon joints, but yes, out of do. stone. How would you actually make that out of stone? Well. No one knows. No one, he, even the Jastrum Geographic Channel doesn't know. <laughs> so do you know, how we, you know how we start a fire, you know, when we make a bow, when you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it heats the... It heats the back scratcher up and it goes back and makes friction and goes down, right? Yeah. So if you if you took some of that some grit of granite that was that was stronger and more dense than the, the stone itself, and you just kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, you would slowly start to make a as we see with our American with our, our Native American Indians in making pottery and bar, uh, bar, bowls to take maize and grind it down the time and time and time you end up with this little curve. So I imagine they did something, something like that, or they got out a Hilti, plugged it in and, <laughs> but I don't think. They <laughs> I think they did. They got the Hilti out. But one thing that I learned, I've learned about Stonehenge is that, when they were creating it, they were also, it's in a time period when they were creating new methods for making pottery. So perhaps what your theory is, is spot on. Again, well, because I'm a potterist, I'm also able to know a little bit about not just the stones, but the pottery itself. I want to know what you don't know how to do, because you obviously, you're a musician, 
you are a soil scientist and yeah. you're clearly a firefighter because I see that you have your equipment ready to go. Um, in what, the background. In the background, saying, I'm our, seeing. Our Google Hangout here. Yeah, so you're good in an emergency. There is an ocean of things that I don't know. And uh, there's another ocean of things that I know that are useless to most anyone. So, um, yeah, I really, I really don't know. I'm just figuring, you know, I'm trying to use logic on, you know, this is the one that still amazes me. How, how do they get that, that stone on top? I mean, this one lifting up, you could go ahead and dig a trench here and with leverage, you could push that up and it would drop into place. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Now this one, the one on top. The one on top. How do you get that on top? You're certainly not doing it with logs. Well, but you know seems what? Like what I, you might do is like pile stuff up gradually. Like you would. I don't have as many things as you do, but like you would take. You take. We're, a, we're you just know, we're digging out all a dictionary. Supplies. Right. And then you take a board, and you just start stacking stuff up and gradually get to that level, and then some really super strong guys or gals would just like push it on, or the aliens did it. Yeah, the alien things. I got. I got to think they have better things to do with their time. Yeah, I'm just imagining it's a though. Thought. That's like, a good thought. But the aliens, they might be doing stuff on our planet just for like kicks and giggles. Like they're like, let's mess with them and do this nonsense and see how many millions of years it takes for them to figure this one out. Good point. That could be that totally, you know totally if plausible, go, Paul. If totally we go plausible. the whole alien route, it's we boom. A bunch of aliens came down and you know, they, they did it. Zapped it up, no problem. And it's Men in Black now. Now we have to change it to Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith. Because That's they right. did use those, um, like they used the holes in the ground to put remains of people. So maybe the aliens came, there was a giant battle, and then they trenched it out, and they threw all the people in there, and they built these stones and said, ah, I will conquer your world. I might have stopped listening oh, somewhere sorry. in there, Paul, in the two minutes. Right. We're so the Hilti, well, that's can, a really good so, tip. Can we talk about building wild? Very, for about very two dark. Minutes? Minutes. It's been very dark with the whole bearing of people, and and that's that's something we still do today. So that's terrible, terrible. Yeah. We don't do a lot of that in Vermont, and obviously, when people get tired of building wild, you just throw them in the hole. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> Nicely played. We'll, we'll let that go. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let that go. I think that's awesome. I might work on that in editing. Okay, so um, what, let's talk about Building Wild, though, for a minute. Have you uh, built anything oh, as crazy as... Oh, wait, sorry. Can I compliment Teresa on that? Because I really do believe that that is... That's how they got that stone up. They build up soil. They build up soil. Soil, 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 soil. This stone's already standing. Then you're able to roll this other stone on because now you're flush with the top of that stone. You dig out your... Your mortise and your tannin, and you're, you roll up and you put this other stone here. Now, because there's that river nearby, maybe we're able to funnel water to then blow all that soil away that we put there, and we're left with this. We're left with this. Well, okay, so you're, uh, that's you're, that's so smart. I didn't even think about the river part. That's really good. And you're a woodworker guy, right? So, yes. So the mortise and tenons. I'm doing the vertical hand thing again. There, there are tenons on the posts on the sarsen stones. And then, so Stonehenge is in a circle. I'm making a circle motion. There are also, it's like highway barriers. There's a mortise on one side of the vert horizontal stone and a tenon on the other. So they milled these in a circle to join them all together. I couldn't do that with every laser level and construction master calculator on the planet. They did it with a pile of rocks. You just yeah, use a CNC I, machine, honey. Uh, oh, yeah. So, sorry. Aliens, aliens. <laughs> Paul, I think we're going to have to have you back to talk about building wild and whatever's next for you. Oh my gosh, yeah. Love, love and envy those projects and that show and that you get to do all that stuff. Yeah. So much fun. I hope people can catch it on the National Geographic channel. Yes. Yes. And follow Paul on Twitter because we totally do. Oh, you got to. Thanks. You have you to. Guys too. You guys are very good. Very good with that too, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. We watched the movie Chef. That's how we figured it all out. I mean. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs>
Hello. I do too, and all I'm doing is eating more. <laughs> okay, so last thing, and then I'll leave you with this. Our son, who's six years old, eats grilled cheese sandwiches. Yes. There is a scene in there where John Favreau makes a grilled cheese sandwich for his son, and the son says, Dad, I just want a grilled cheese sandwich. And he says, Oh, no, you don't. And he goes through a whole thing. I can't go near my stove without reliving that entire scene of him making the grilled cheese sandwich. It was both an art form of filmmaking and a celebration of cheese. It was fantastic. Yes, it is. And, and uh, because I'm a huge, huge cheese fan, as a matter of fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had a big cheese night here at the house where we had 14 couples, uh, sorry, seven couples, 14 people. Everyone had a different country to bring two cheeses from and then a wine pairing that went along with that. Uh, uh, another, another time, but yes, the cheese. You know, I spent a summer making grilled cheese sandwiches following the Grateful Dead around in uh, I think 1982, and uh, my grilled cheeses look nothing like that. We were using, I believe, Velveeta and <laughs> and Wonderbread. But yeah, you know, as in anything, and you guys know, you're craftsmen. You know, you take time and you take a lot of a lot of effort into what you do, and you want it to be the best. So it's important to find the hot part of that, you know, of that of that. Um, skillet to make sure that that's beautiful toasted toasted bread there with the gruyere on top and maybe mixed with a oh who knows but i'm telling you yeah i'm very hungry now paul it's 14 lunchtime. kinds of cheese party we gotta go we have to we I, I, have but, a, like, okay a thing that I'll, we do I'll, with, I'll save my question it, about it what being, do you drink with 14 cheeses though it, paul next time I next hope. time yeah you're inebriated at the end of the evening i'll leave you with that <laughs> I'm drunk now. <laughs> oh, that was, that's so good. Check him out at pauldemayo.com. Yes. Watch Building Wild. National Geographic Channel. Paul, thank you. Thank you so Mark, much. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye Take now. Care. Bye. Oh, he went by. Oh, So, Mark, I'm thinking the Hilti might be the way to go to get those mortise and tenon joints going on. But what, what kind of Hilti would you pick, though? Well, what Paul was talking about was a demolition hammer or chipping okay. hammer. So your, your Hilti makes 15,000 million different kinds of power tools. It's a lot. The one How do they manufacture was, that many? It's difficult. Yeah, okay. The one he was referring to, though, would be like a chipping hammer. Also, there are different kinds of those, but a 15 okay. or 20 pound should be like a jackhammer. I think you should write a blog about it. I think you should write a blog about it. I would. And I think you should do that exercise every day. This is called my loose face character, Carrie Eisenberg, who we have just met. I think that you might be my first um, blacksmith, actually that I've ever met really in person. Like I've seen people work and everything, but I don't know if I've ever had a relationship with a blacksmith and I really like to start right now. How are you? I am fabulous and blacksmiths are awesome. So uh, I'm glad I can you know, get you in there. <laughs> nice. Well, and the work that you create is like absolutely amazing. We've been on your website a lot and looking at all the cool stuff that you are creating out of your shop. And I'm especially fascinated by the red cloak stuff that you're doing. Yeah. But before we, we were talking Stonehenge today, before right. we start like tapping into your expertise and your knowledge about creating awesomeness, I want to talk about Ellen's design challenge just for a brief moment because our friend Jeff Devlin was your partner, and I kind of want to know what it was like working with him in that kind of high-pressure situation. Jeff was uh, my rock, my Stonehenge. Um, <laughs> nicely, nicely played. You in a free mug. <laughs> Holding up um, a My Fix It Up Life coffee mug that only two of exist. But anyway, you can have this one. I'll wash it. <laughs> No, leave it dirty. It's okay. I'm a blacksmith. Nice. Um, <laughs> no, um, it was incredible working with Jeff. He went with whatever I asked him to do. Obviously, he's not really done any metal work before, but, you know, I threw him in front of a 3,000 degree forge and said, you know, pick up this 80 pound piece of steel and then bend it. And he actually did it. I don't know why, but he did. 
Did he like, did he keep his eyebrows and everything intact? He does have a permanent scar. I, I left my mark on him. Um, he did, a, did, did you just slap the iron to him like a calf at the corral? You marked him. <laughs> yeah. By the way, I know everything about blacksmithing, so I, I know you can tell by my use of jargon. I don't think you actually really do. But we'll go with that. Yes, my husband is an expert blacksmith. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Not really. Not so much. Yet, in, in the background behind you, which is beautiful pine paneling, and you've got a little art shelf doohickey thing up there with That was actually joints. Um, one of the first wood pieces I ever built. Really? Really? Yeah. I absolutely love it because it's like the staggered heights and, and everything. Oh, it's got box, joint, box joints too. Love it the does. box joint. Mm -hmm. Love the box joint. So you cut that on a table saw? Absolutely. With a cross cut sled? Uh, I believe I built a jig that you actually cranked it every time you cut a joint so everything was perfectly spaced. Nice. Very good. Wow. Very good. I totally have five of those. <laughs> You have no idea what to do with the rest of them. I've seen box joints. I've never cut one. I've seen them, but I've seen them cut on cross cut sleds. So they sit a cross cut sled is a whole thing for your table saw. And there's just a little notch in it. Yeah, and you, just, and you, you cut good. one joint and keep moving it over, moving yeah. it over. May, are we talking about the same thing? Absolutely. Okay. But yes. Mine, mine was just a little bit more high tech. I know what you're talking about. I do know what you're talking. There's a whole thing that is like for a cabinet yeah. style table saw. That's a, all metal and that stuff. I'm yeah. talking about something you'd make at home out of plywood and a couple pieces of red oak. De definitely more DIY than if you're a DIYer with a cross cut sled, you you're need really a cool. different name. Yeah. For wood. <laughs> what would you be called? A mega awesome DIYer? I don't know. Super mega. Yeah. Super mega awesome. So, Carly, you went to RISD, right? I did. Which is kind of, and every, everybody's gone there, I sort of am a little jealous of. <laughs> but then also, too, I read that you had only been blacksmithing for like nine months before you. Yeah, about nine and a half, ten months when we went to filming. How impressive that is that, you know, I think that speaks to the true nature of your craftsmanship and your artistry and your skills and your desire to like do all that stuff to be able to go and be seen by millions of people on TV making furniture and stuff. I think that's awesome. Yeah, my favorite part was actually episode one when they gave us the box and told us we could use the materials in it. I looked and I was like, uh, I've never worked with tubing before. I have no idea what I'm doing. They made it look like I knew what I was doing, but I really just started hitting stuff. Okay, so I, wa <laughs> I watched that one, Carly, and I immediately, once I saw what you and Jeff were doing, I started to text Jeff. <laughs> and I went back and looked at those <laughs> when I texted him at a different time, and I realized that each message was about three-quarters profanity <laughs> because I was freaking out at what you guys were doing. That project, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not making that up. That, that was great. Well, can we talk about Stonehenge? I want to get back to it. Oh, right. Because, because we're talking about Stonehenge today. And uh, you know, I proposed to my husband that he should create such a thing for me for Mother's Day this year, because you know, every woman, you know, flowers and you know, bath beads or whatever. How about like making some actual Stonehenge? That would rock. That's practical. Too. Literally, we, we, that would it, rock. We're going to use a garden in the middle of it. It'd be yeah. perfect. Yeah. Oh, it should have a fountain and it should have like fire, water and fire and stuff. Can you <laughs> help me with the, with the astronomy part of it? <laughs> okay, so we, we've been talking about, you know, how to, how to dig the ditch, how to, you know, do the mortise and tenon joints out of stone that they actually were able to create. And I'm curious because you work with all kinds of pretty super awesome tools. Like how would you do mortise and tenon in stone? I mean, I've got to go for, for the big chunk of it, you know, getting it off, cleaning it away. You got to go with jackhammer, you know, just getting that raw material out. But as soon as you get close to it, you've got to really start going a little smoother. And you can do everything from, you know, grinders with flat wheels on them 
but honestly, they kind of got it right back then. You really got to go in with a hand chisel when you get to the super details. There's nothing that beats it. It sounds like it would take a while. I think it took them like a whole week to do A that. whole week. Yeah. 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 They didn't even get like Saturday off. I think they had to work <laughs> straight through. Probably. I mean, yeah. it was probably like that. Like Ellen's design challenge. You guys had to just bust stuff out. It's same, same there. I mean, yeah. they, they did have to take one day off to sacrifice the stag on the on the altar that they built on the world's <laughs> oldest, most accurate clock. And then yes. that's what they used to actually dig the ditches was the antlers. Yes. I oh, totally that seems practical. It. Well, there's like, <laughs> and then I think about the antlers and like how long that would take. And then I think about the antler I would use. If you've seen those, because because like um, those faux heads of animals are really kind of in in the last few years. Oh, you just need put like on their five walls. point buck. Yeah. Yeah. But like you would have to paint it like a turquoise or something pretty <laughs> for me in order for me to be like out there digging in a field all day long. Like we'd have to bedazzle it, make it like. The hand will be. I'm losing uh, like a lot of interest. You in are. The whole thing. Yeah. Just, oh, okay. just so you know. <laughs> All right. Just well, let's go back to the stones though, because you know they use sarsen stone and blue stone. Like if we had our picks and we were talking with Paul DeMeo about where we should actually create Stonehenge in this country. Yeah, and, like if you could pick anywhere. Yeah. Around these United Montana, States. Montana, North yes. Dakota. There's not much. I I, maybe we'll ask uh, Jeff Devlin. <laughs> <laughs> what does he think? <laughs> Hi, Jeff Devlin. How are you? Well, hello, Teresa. How are you? Hey, what's up, Mark? Excuse me, sir. This is private call. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> what's up, Kylie? <laughs> uh, Hi. <laughs> hey. Jeff. Jeff Devlin, Hi. Ellen's Design Challenge, DIY Network. You've stopped by to say hello to your compatriot in design build arms i haven't talked to him in like 13 whole hours yeah i think it was 12 12 <laughs> hours <laughs> you guys you really need to stay better connected I mean, <laughs> no. like i don't know like i'm sure that you've had a couple of meals since then you no no not me he's give us okay i ran out of gummy bears oh man that's bad that's bad. Okay, and I like to. I'm I'm the dark guy here. I I want the grit. I want I want all the grinder wheel slag, all that stuff. So Ellen's design challenge. Everybody's all happy. We're all, oh, let's achieve. I want to know the darkest moment when you two were just like freaking out. Oh my God, we can't finish. You know where? When did when did that happen? Because it happens to everybody. Dining yeah. table. Yeah, I mean, you could you can tell them. <laughs> Harley had a tendency to change the design sometimes. Uh, which I don't know anyone like air. that. Once or twice, maybe. Yeah, okay, three or four, whatever. Hey, it's all so numbers. You, who's counting? Right. Kind of, numbers are only relevant you know when what? you're not using them. Yeah, I will say this. I, I'm, I'm sort of amazed. Like, I've been sort of slowly uh, worked into the process of television, and that's, you know, been good for me. Carly was thrown to the wolves. Like all of those designers, all six of them were thrown into a pit with eight cameras saying, do it really quick. Nobody likes to do furniture design under those conditions. I don't know anybody that really thrives in that. And I got to give her credit. Uh, one, she's younger. Me, I would have freaked out and pissed my pants. <laughs> um, you know, there were moments, but again, I think it's one of those things where, you know, you got to give her credit. And, you know, and now she's wearing, wait, what do you got going on there in the ears this time? Before it was bones in the ear. Now she's, she's taking it back a little bit. You told me you didn't like the bone. I told her, I said, she told her I need to scare back or get like the big, huge hoops. You should have uh, worn the hoops. You should have worn the bones for Stonehenge Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you got to be thinking about these things, Carl. If you're, yeah. you're going to move forward in this business, yes. you need to be thinking about the details. Your public I persona. Can't, I can't have this on my really? show. I'm sorry. How embarrassing. Carly, we're going to have to say goodbye to you. Well, I have, no, we're not. I'm kidding. I have to I'm say, though, like, everybody. You have flashbacks. Really... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to know okay. one thing. I don't remember what this woman's name is. She was one of the designers. And, um, Everyone came across really well, except for for her. Of she course. had frowny face all the time. She, you know what? Again, television is a fickle thing. They can pit you. They can take 
only the moments where you're upset or have the sad face. For me, every time I shoot a show, it's always me going, woo! That's the only thing that makes it. Um, in her case, you know, look, there's, there's a struggle to try to get certain things done in the time frame. And while people say, yes, we can t handle the pressure, it's not always easy. And you're thrown, you know, look, you're working with a new carpenter. You don't always think the same. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I seriously, I, and, and I'm guessing you're talking about Leslie. Yes. Leslie is a sweet, very talented lady that um, I'm impressed uh, with what she does, but they kind of, you know, they sort of targeted her a little bit. That's what it kind of looked like because I don't, I didn't really feel like she could have that much of a frowny face all the time. And you do say woo after everything. You I, do. I yeah. do. Right, Carly? Woo! <laughs> Let's have eggs for breakfast. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Followed up by some type of awkward hug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, we got a hug now. Oh, I'm sweating bullets in here. Okay, so. So I have to ask Jeff about Stonehenge. I want to know how he. I have would no make... idea. I don't even know what. Here's you're the question. About. I'm putting you in Answer's the three. wilderness in Vermont, and you have to make a mortise and tenon joint in with stone. What tool would you grab? That weigh thirty tons. Yes. What tool would I grab? Mm -hmm. um, I'm guessing like a rock hammer, my guess. Yeah. That's Keep how you break out of The sarsen stone is actually soapstone, so it's pretty soft. Yeah. I have no idea what she's talking about. It's like this. When she starts talking about metal, I just don't know. She, she's doing this, and I, I don't understand any of it. Are you wearing a hoodie sweatshirt, Jeff? Dillon? I am. I'm rocking because... a hoodie. Because I'm a hoodlum by heart. Nice. You know? Well, also because you're you scarred count. over seventy percent of your body from being next to the you know what? To the can you still forge. see it? It's still <laughs> right there. The stuff she made me do. It's like here, take this right piece. there. Yeah. Nice. So, does Carly actually mark everybody that she works with? Is that why she has a one woman forge? Yeah. And you'd be surprised every time I'd be like, "Well, I'll help," and she's like, "No, Jeff, don't touch that. Yeah, don't. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Just." Just stand there and look pretty, dude, and yeah. twist it when I tell you to look twist it. Nice. He's good at standing there and looking pretty. Well, thank yeah. you. Jeff, how, He's how, a how, man. how nut jobbed out were you when you walked into that shop for the first time and saw I, all that I jet? All, I all those out. Jet, yeah, you, you, just, you lose it? Jet, Festool, Craig, Stanley. Oh, my gosh. It was like a dream come true. I mean, it was really amazing. Yeah. So the next show that Carly is involved in, she's going to walk on set and she's going to say, where's all the stuff? Oh, yeah, Carly. And no. Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Where's Jeff? Well, oh, wait, wait I, I need Jeff and I need all these. Where are all these? Wait, I don't understand. Yeah, you're going to walk on to some other TV. You'll get a TV show. You'll walk on and it will be a train wreck. Wait, wait, the wait, guy with the broken combined? table saw. What? The, the, the wood shop, yes, it had all this beautiful stuff. You go out to our little alley. I don't know if you noticed, but every time we were forging, we were in this little alley on the side of the building. That's probably what it's going to be like. <laughs> Forge, power hammer, post vice, done. Nice. Nice. So, Carly, where, what part of the country are you from? Or I'm where? in North Carolina. Awesome. Now, in can you go, if, if I wanted to, like, watch you create these, like, storybook kind of creations that you do there, that You're I'm fixated on. in Wonderland. And that red chair couch that the red moon code. rising gorgeous i want like i want that she won't sell it to me i'm trying to get it like half price or something like that she won't sell it to me I yeah, like, no, because I'm you're cheap I, well i am i'm not i'm just saying like you know me come on family discount or something god Devlin. <laughs> yeah you know her mortgage comes every month just like yours does right you, you can't you get the whole thing well, I just pay mine like at final notice. That's when you pay it. So you can sneak out a month and a half. Is that why I haven't got my payment for the tables yet? Yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, that check's going to come. Wait till the second check comes. Uh, but then that you have to say woo. Yeah. <laughs> that check's going to come. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I, I sent, seriously, I just send a, a Super Bowl is my first check. I write yeah. something on a Super Bowl, throw it in the <laughs> throw it in priority <laughs> mail, and say I'll get it on a napkin. Yeah. No, but actually, I'm actually really excited because after meeting Carly, my uh, my mind sort of started thinking because I wasn't thinking metal. I thought it was. I, I'm like, you can't do that with metal. You can't do that with steel. And she sort of opened up my eyes. So uh, we're gonna partner up, and and I'm gonna bring her in on a couple of projects that I have 
as well as some of the shows that I'll be working on and get her building stuff and getting the, the collaboration because we did get along pretty well, you know, it, right? It totally sometimes, showed. Totally sometimes, showed. sometimes. Yeah, it totally showed. No, you guys, even though, like you were saying, Jeff, TV is selective and fickle and they look for the, you know, the frowny face or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was clear that you guys liked each other and got along and right. did good work too. Well, here, let's, let's do this. Here, I'll interview Carly now. So Carly, what was your experience like working with the famed carpenter, Jeff Devlin? Was it, you know, on a scale of one to 10, are we talking 10? And if you say anything less than 10, oh, I know you live. I Go know ahead. you know where I live. That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to have to go with the 9.75. There was a time that I was more drama than his daughter. <laughs> okay. I saw that. There yeah. was a little buildup. There's a reason why that was said. Was no, we weren't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Wasn't there something about like magic pencils or something in that whole exchange? No? Yeah, there was. There was. Yeah. The funny thing is, is I'll say stuff and I have no idea what I said. And I don't even remember it until I see it. We basically, that, that whole thing was such a, a whirlwind um, that you look back on it and you watch it, you're like kind of experiencing and be like, oh yeah, I think I blessed the pencil, something like that. I mean, there was- and I'm not Catholic, so what's that? I was gonna say, there was points that you know, didn't get shown where I was riding around on your back. We were mm -hmm. dancing around behind David and Leslie when they were fighting. Yeah, we All were- All the fun stuff. Yeah. Photobombing <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> their argument. Oh, totally. We, we were having probably way too much fun. I mean, I honestly feel as though um, it was almost too easy. It was one of those things where it was like, you got to be kidding me. This is... I wouldn't call it too shop. easy. Well, it was for me. I'm like, I'm not winning yeah. 100 grand. Cheetos. Yeah. <laughs> so, awesome. uh, that is so cool. What was the hardest project to go from, Carly, however you design it, piece of paper or iPad or whatever, from piece of paper to nailed together? Definitely the dining table base because we actually, um, the design I had originally done, we just didn't have the right setup for it. So I changed it and we didn't have the right setup for that one. So we said, don't laugh at me, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like the cutest ever. Propping up the table. It was it was absolutely a mess. And then we forgot about the chairs because I picked the grandma chair. Brain fart, I don't know. It was, I like the table, hate the chairs. Yeah. Who uses salt and pepper anyway? If you saw the show, you know, look, you don't push the salt and pepper across into the middle. You keep it right near you. Eat yeah. food, you don't need salt and pepper, damn it. You know, and, and gaps in tables are great because then you can put a puppet show on for like the grown ups. Like the kids have something to do and you have your friends over and then they're like, oh, here's a little guy. One right? thing Carly forgot to mention was that it's a pet friendly table. So your scraps, you just push to the middle and it goes down that way. So it's easier for the animals. I fans say that. They're like, I love this table for a family. I've got two dogs. You just push everything into the middle. You know Perfect. what you're talking about. This is obviously it right here. This is your infomercial table for the Jeff and Carly knife set. So you, <laughs> you cut the chicken up or the piece of bread or whatever it is. And then when that segment's over, you know what I'm talking about. I saw you do it. And then you just take and scrape it to the middle. And yep. You get the tomato out and the two by four that you cut up. <laughs> and then you go to the thing and then you... Cut the magazine paper. I don't watch TV really this, that this, much. This word comes to mind, vittles. That's not a word I use much, but I think that, that you would be creating vittles with all the stuff in the middle. I don't use that enough to you know. You don't use that enough? That's no? not in the dictionary. That's I'm not. Pretty sure. it's it's not a I, I'm pretty sure Jeff and I oh. I know what you're talking about. The show. Yeah. Oh, women. Uh, well, yeah, women. We, we, have to, we have to, like, you know, do that thing that I'm we don't gonna, like to do. I'm going to spell it Carly Eisenberg. There are three W's. There's a period. C-A-R-L-E-Y-E-I-S-E-N-B-E-R-G. You weren't a cheerleader, were you? No, Jesus, that was very bad. <laughs> that was God, horrible. Was brutal. You've got, it's like I Eisenberg. I, I don't know. I've got issues. There's with a lot name. of consonants and no vowels. I got, I know. I or know. No, I, no. I, like, what do you want? It should I, just be Blacksmith Carly. I think that's hot. It could be a band. I it said it be... should just be Carly. Because it's like you could be like the new Madonna with no last name. Just Carly. Quah, like Oprah. Yes. 
Yeah. You should totally rock that. Carly, you can come back sometimes when Jeff is busy and he won't be here and we can talk <laughs> about branding and, you know, some different projects and, and things that you do. What kind of discount always, you, sure. you may be willing to offer the My Fix It Up Life media brand. But now we have to go build some Stonehenge. At Carly underscore IMF. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you so See much. You, really appreciate Bye. it, you guys. See <laughs> Carly, I'll talk to you in 10 minutes. Bye, Jeff. See ya. <laughs> I'm out. Oh You're insane, Mr. Jeff. Uh, Thank you that, for stopping by. We're, we're not it. recording you anymore. Ah, oh, sweet. You're done. Yeah, so you can swear your fucking head off. And get the <laughs> hey, you're <laughs> Oh, it's Carly. Bye. You got a very important girl on the line. See you later. Uh, see you guys. Later.